On the first day of Christmas, my Bruno gave to me a die-hard battery. <laughs> first of the many days of Christmas. At least the third biggest holiday around this time of year. Broadcasting live from the North Pole, it's Santa's Workshop. This is The Blah. In this episode, everybody dies. I'm your host, Kevin, along with my super great friends, Ben. Hi. And Chad. How's it going? Welcome to the podcast, folks. That's right. It's that time of the year. It's Bruce-mas time. The holidays are such a wonderful time. And this year, we're celebrating Bruce-mas instead of Christmas here on the podcast. And this will be the first of the many days of Bruce-mas. And Algorithm, why don't you tell everybody what exactly Bruce-mas is? Um, uh, Bruce-mas is like uh, our own personalized version of Festivus, where we worship the god uh, Bruce Willis in his many forms um, in celebration of the one and only Bruce. And um, it comes from a really hilarious Reddit thread where two dudes give each other Bruce Willis-themed Christmas presents, and we adopted it last year. We're adopters. We adopted it, and now we're going to run with it and turn it into the at least the third biggest holiday around this time of year. Nice. Now, Chad, would you, by your estimation, are we early adopters? Ah, uh, probably. I mean, I think there was a lot of love for that Reddit thread back in the day, but I don't think many people adopted the holiday. So may- we probably are early adopters. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. We're going to try to bring it to the masses. I'd like to think so. Yeah. I would be surprised if there's another podcast out there celebrating Bruce Miss. And if you are, you suck. And if you are, come on in and we'll beat you (laughs) mercilessly. Come on in and join us because we are all about love here on the podcast. Kind of. We're mostly about snark and douchebaggery. Yeah. Well, snark and douchebaggery. So who brought this hilarious short film to the table? One of you two. Short film. (laughs) Char Higo, not me. I did. I've been Benny, Benny, to the it? table cold because I hadn't even seen it myself. I just uh, had uh, re- seen numerous headlines uh, and articles talking about it. So I was aware that ex- it existed. <laughs> and I brought it to you guys. Good enough. I wasn't. You you, you telling us about it recently was the first I'd heard of it. It's uh, the resurrection of John McClane in commercial form, which is hilarious. Love it, man. Many, many years after the fact. Yeah, they finally got him to do a Die Hard battery commercial. I didn't even know there was such a thing as Die Hard batteries, and now I'm kind of... Oh, come on. I really didn't. Really? I just uh, don't pay attention to the car battery industry, I guess. Well, I don't either. I knew that they were out there. It's not my brand of choice, but <laughs> I do know they're there. Do you want a cul-de-sac into your car battery brand of choice? <laughs> it, it, was the, uh, it was the Sears and Roebuck brand of car battery and now i believe they're sold by uh, advanced auto parts I was, I was trying to do like an old school a semi old school kind of segue into <clears throat> like an endorsement <laughs> <laughs> it's not my brand of choice but they are out there my brand of choice for all my vehicles is interstate batteries you can trust interstate when you're on the road alone or with your family and your car breaks down Fear not. Interstate is there. (laughs) Cue jingle. How's that? I'm not sure if that's a battery commercial or like a triple A (laughs) commercial. Hey, I'm doing it off the cuff, baby. This is what I got. I like it. I like it. Maybe it's both. Maybe interstate batteries. You know, if your battery dies, they'll actually come out to you and give you a jump or put a new battery in your car. So does that mean that Bruce Willis will come out to your car and swap out your battery and on this uh, with diehards now? Because if so, I'm switching to fucking diehard batteries. Well, that's the way it should be if it's not. Agree? Yeah, I totally agree. If I if that was the case, I would run my battery out all the time and constantly try and harass him into singing a few bars from his Seagram's commercials for me. Dude, yes. I found this really funny, man. I I didn't know it existed until you mentioned it, Benny, and it's obviously like two minutes long, so easily digestible it's easily digestible and i just kind of cracked up and i love that people can make commercials now without being like yelled at for being sellouts like back in the day yes totally now a guy like that does a commercial like this and everybody's like dude finally well maybe not like that but it was a big time taboo back in the day man nobody did that kind of stuff way way back 
You know, Chad, I've got a funny little nugget about that. You may or may not know. And also for the folks at home, a lot of times back in the day, celebrities here would do endorsements in Japan in particular and also in Europe because those commercials would not be seen here, but they would still get paid large sums of money. You've described the premise of the movie Lost in Translation. I was just going to say, man. Correct. That is correct. I didn't know that until I saw that in Lost in Translation, and I thought that that bit in, in that movie was hilarious. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. So was the nugget that the Japanese commercials existed, or was the nugget that Bruce Willis recently did a Japanese commercial where he puts a propeller on his head? Uh, it was a nugget that celebrities would go and do commercials overseas. <laughs> Well, then I'm going to hijack your nugget and, and sidecar the nugget with a, a link that you need to watch the first 20 seconds of of Bruce Willis in Japan with a Japanese voiceover with a propeller on his bald head because it's pretty good. Is this what I get, I'm getting right now in my, my feed? Yeah, man. There's lots of really great Arnie, Japanese Arnie commercials out there. I've only seen a couple of them. I think I posted one back in the day on our feeds. Maybe it was Instagram or Facebook, but... I'm sure there's a bunch, and they would be amazing. Mr. Spockle. Yeah, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole one day. (laughs) Japanese commercial YouTube rabbit hole or an Arnie YouTube rabbit hole? Watching people have, like, these two-hour-long collections of Schwarzenegger Japanese commercials. (laughs) That's awesome. Wow, that was uh, very, um, very Mr. Sparkle. Yeah, man, Mr. Sparkle. All right, so... Uh, all of that being well and good and said, what do we think? What do we think of this ad? I mean, we love we love our Bruce. We love our Bruce. We love our John McClane. It was delightful, and then just get kept getting progressively more and more delightful. I suppose him looking up at the vent was where I started cracking a good smile. Yeah, that was good. Was, uh, or I like I like, kind of liked how he flew through the window to go in to yes. get the <laughs> yeah the, to get the battery now did, did either of you notice if was he barefoot when he flew through the glass oh, I, I will i will definitely get jimmy google on that oh boy yeah let's do that because i think um that's important that is right? a negative barefoot, he shoes Bruno's on. negative ghost rider they missed an opportunity there I love the lady who's just like, welcome to such and such auto store, like doesn't give a shit that someone just got thrown through the glass. Don't forget, free installation. <laughs> yeah, it was advanced auto parts. How do you get you that go. in there? Yeah, they're clearly doing a fan service with just like tons of little Easter eggs and bringing Argyle out of retirement, which is hilarious. <laughs> out of retirement. Do we know that he retired? <laughs> no, I'm just I was making that assumption. He retired from the limo business. We'll put it that way. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything else. Didn't he? Didn't he reappear in uh, Die Die, Die Hard, hard. Forty Three? <laughs> Die Hard with a hard on. Hey, this is a family show. <laughs> this is a holiday show. This is a family show and a holiday show. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean. Forget the fact that I went on an insane rant last week, <laughs> which was amazing. And swore up and down like a sailor. Which I never do. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought this is, I mean, this is cool. I like stuff like this. You know, I mean, it's it's tongue-in-cheek. It's funny. It's, you know, Bruce is not taking himself too seriously, obviously, you know, making a commercial like this. It's funny, man. And the production values are good, you know? Yeah. What would you think first, first watch, Jesus, speak English. What did you think first time you saw it, Benny? I mean, what can you say? It's Bruno. It's it's funny, you know? It's it's not too long. <laughs> Uh, it's it you know, pretty much everything you said, Kev. It's you know some fan service. There's some humor. There's you know it's great that that Bruce Bruce looks great. You know it's great that he's not taking himself too seriously. Totally. Yeah. What's not what's not to like? What's not to love? Someone chimed in that it's the third best Die Hard movie, which I thought was pretty funny. That right there is an epic comment. <laughs> it's pretty funny too. Not unrealistic, but quite funny. No. Not at all. But that said, man, we watched Die Hard 2 recently, you know, this year at least, and uh, it was better than I remembered it, man. I remembered it being, like, the worst movie on the face of the earth, and, it, you know, it had its moments. I don't remember it being the worst movie on the face of the earth, but I do, when we watched it again, I was, like, pretty impressed with how interesting the plot was. Like, you know, it was laid out really well. I mean, of course, it was an adapted from a book, which we didn't know either. Fair, but fair. This isn't about Die Hard 2. This is about Die Hard, the Die Hard battery commercial. <laughs> the short film. 
Maybe they'll put it up for uh, you know Academy Award for Best Short Film. You never know. What do they call the What do they call the commercial awards? There's a There's a name. Oh, for I don't them. know. Something's. I didn't even know they did that. That's funny. It's like the Hoovies or the Dooleys or the, the Goolies. Goolies or something weird like that. The Goonies. Goobies. Goonies never die. The Goonies. I don't know. I totally got the feeling that this like this kind of should have been a Super Bowl commercial. Mm. And I'm curious why it wasn't a Super Bowl commercial. Like they clearly spent a shit ton of money on this. Yeah, this is definitely Super Bowl commercial material. Yeah. For sure. And I think it's great because it's it's current. Like this just came out. Do we know how long ago this came out? Well, this is going to be time shifted. It so it, we probably should just say like it came out around Halloween. Well, it came out around Halloween, but timely for our first Bruce Miss yeah. mir- miracle. The first day of <laughs> first Bruce Miss miracle. I like that. Our first Bruce Miss miracle is this commercial. So it was um, fortuitous, if I may. Yeah, Jarhigo located this particular piece of material and uh, threw it down on the EBD plotting table in our secret lair in Val Verde. It showed up on Bill Paxton's radar. Yeah. And I mean, that's the other thing. They don't celebrate Christmas in Val Verde. So, you know, it's outlawed. So we had to celebrate Christmas. Fair enough. Right? Totally. Christmas is an inclusive holiday. I'm so on board with that. <laughs> How so, Ben? Oh, whether you're from Valverde or you're from I'm trying to think of another fictional place here, well, you get the gist. No matter where you're from, who you are, <laughs> what your family celebrates, you can celebrate Christmas with us. And you can change. You can change your family too. Like join the cult of Christmas. Mm, bring joy and bullets into your life. And if you don't, we'll make you disown your family. So bring them along. So Theo was in this commercial as well. At least that's what it said in the um, yes title description. What? Who was Theo? I don't remember that person character. Was that in like Die Hard twenty three or <laughs> did he not come along till Die Hard twenty three? He, he was the nerdy um, Ivy League sweater wearing computer hacker dude that like breaks into the vault in the first Die Hard. That's what I thought. Okay, right on. But he's not like a ally of McLean. No, I kind of got the vibe that, like, as Bruno's walking down the street to get a battery, he sees the dude in the coffee shop with a little microphone thing on his cheek, and then, like, that kind of sets okay. everything in motion. That was the vibe I got. Okay, yeah. I'm digging it. Yeah, he was, like, the bad guy in the commercial, not an ally. Right? He was the mastermind. Was he also he's driving the excavator, excavator at the end? end? Yeah, and he was blowing up with the grenade. So Okay, cool. What did you guys think of the fin- the final Yippie Kaye being stolen by Argyle? I kind of wasn't on board with that, but whatever. No, I'm not. No, I wasn't on board with that either. Uh, well, I was on board with it. What? Say what? You, you dug it? Sure. I suppose it's better than Bruno saying it. If he had said it, it might have been a little bit too repetitive. Well, there wouldn't have been a little joke there, you know. Hey, know. you stole my line thing, you know. That's that's sort of the that was the point in including it in the first place, that I think. So, All right. You know. Well, maybe I'm just mm. like fully gripes of Kevin about a two minute commercial that I shouldn't really. Nothing worry wrong about. with that, man. It does fit into the gripes of Kev category as something that I should not be worried about. It's exactly. It's like the Kleenex. My favorite segment of our shows in the, this year have have been your just utterly fucking ridiculous gripes. It's just the funniest goddamn thing. I crack up. I'm in ha- happy you're enjoying it. And I I, uh, I can assure you that there will be more gripes to come. I'm sure there will. There'll be another, another Bruce Miss miracle. I just got a <laughs> picture. I can just kind of picture you, like, watching the movie, you know, with your stroking your mustache. Just being like, oh, wait a second, and pausing it and being like, why is it so dirty? <laughs> it's always just the, you know, the weirdest goddamn thing. Uh, Dust everywhere little how we make the yeah so dusty <laughs> i think that was that was one of the first big ones i think was the dust in big trouble in little china but uh i'll, I'll give you a little behind the scenes peek here for the folks at home a little how we make the sausage kind of thing lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> and that concludes the first brucemas miracle everybody
My brand of choice for all my vehicles is Interstate Batteries. You can trust Interstate when you're on the road, alone, or with your family, and your car breaks down. Fear not. Interstate is there. How's that? <laughs> Cue jingle. I'm not sure if that's a battery commercial or like a AAA commercial. <laughs> hey, I'm doing it off the cuff, baby. This is what I got. 